Hello. In this mini lecture, we are going to discuss the eye and the visual system. So the anatomy of the eyeball. Everybody, um, you know, is very familiar with your own eyeballs. You see them every day. Uh, it is located within the bony orbit of the skull, and that bony orbit uh, protects the the uh, eyeball itself, as well as um, and um, and an additional. An additional protection is a, a large amount of adipose tissue that is in and around the structures within the orbit. Um, other parts of the eye that are the eye complex that uh, are protective are the eyelids, also known as the palpebrae, here and here, and those are uh, what close to cover the eyeball. And there's another um, very thin epithelium called the conjunctiva. And the, you may have heard of conjunctivitis, which is also known as pink eye, which is an inflammation of that conjunctiva. And that is this very thin membrane that we can see here going along the eyelid. It attaches to the eyelid. It comes down along the eyelid and reflects um, back onto the eyeball and goes around. Now it doesn't go across the cornea, but uh, attaches all the way to the white of the eye, which is called the sclera, and then comes um, reflects again on to the superior eyelid. So this um, protective um, epithelium um, is important for protecting the orb, and it's also why your contact lenses don't float all the way back um, around the backside of your eyeball, because that conjunctiva goes all the way around. Oops, back. So the functional part of the eye, we have three layers or three tunics. And the outermost is called the fibrous tube tunic, and it's the sturdiest of the three. It um, consists of the white of the eye, which is called the sclera, and that's about oh, at least 90% of the orb. And this clear area that covers over the colored um, iris. So you can see the iris here, and what you really can't see very well over the top of it is the cornea. The cornea is the main refractive index of your eye, um, and it's very highly innervated. So um, when something gets in your eye, um, actually the sclera is too, you, you can feel it and it hurts. Um, and what else? Oh, and this part um, as we mentioned in the last slide, the conjunctiva covers this part of the eye, the sclera, but does not cover the cornea because you definitely want um, light to be able to go through it. And here's another um, schematic of this um, with a bunch of colors. Um, so here again is the sclera is this outer portion here that's kind of in brown and then uh, and then pale, a little paler up here, and then the sclera or uh, I'm sorry, the cornea is this clearer part here anteriorly. And in the next slide, here it is again with no color. So again, here is the sclera on the outside here, the most superficial coat or tunic, and here is the cornea. The next layer in is the vascular tunic, and this has a couple of different components. It's the middle layer of the eyeball, and it includes the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. And it's pictured here in this red color. And this is the choroid, where the blood vessels are. And it comes anteriorly, and we have what's um, here is called the ciliary body, and then an extension more anterior is the iris. The um, choroid has tons and tons of little blood vessels and capillaries, and it is what's going to provide nutrients and oxygen to the retina, which is just superficial to it, right here. The ciliary body um, contains the ciliary process, which is a, a secretory epithelium and the ciliary muscle. And what's important about the ciliary body is that that ciliary muscle in here is what attaches to the lens via these suspensory ligaments. And it changes um, the shape of the lens to allow you to um, adjust your focus from near to far. 
this is what we lose when we get to be older and we need uh, bifocals. You That muscle gets weak and you are unable to change this shape of your lens very well. And so you need uh, quote unquote cheaters um, in order to see close up because your, your lens won't adapt or you, it can't adapt because those muscles get weak. The iris, of course, is the favorite is the poet's favorite part of the eye because those are the all the, the the colored parts that are give us our either blue eyes or brown eyes or or hazel eyes or green eyes um and that's quote unquote the pretty part here's another um diagram of just the exact same thing uh without any of the color um i tried to make sure that because color can kind of be confusing sometimes. So I try to go make sure we have some black and white images as well as the color images uh, illustrations to, to make sure everybody can see things clearly. So again, here's the choroid. The sclera, again, is the surface, the outer layer. Then the middle layer is the, um, the vascular tunic. Here's the choroid um, toward the posterior and, and, lap, and um, middle parts of the eye. And then anteriorly, we have uh, the ciliary body, and the iris. So the iris uh, actually has muscles in it, and the iris is what controls the size of the pupil. So those, what I've tried to illustrate here um, is that there's a constrictor pupillae muscle, which is circular, and it, when it contracts, it makes the it um makes basically it contracts inward and makes the pupil smaller and this will occur when you um walk outside into bright light and you want to protect your retina from all that extra light so it, it's smaller also <clears throat> excuse me if you think back to um our lectures my lectures on the um the parasympathetic nervous system and what it does it makes the, the pupil smaller um, for the for your rest and digest mode. This is to demonstrate kind of a neutral pupil. And then if you're in very dim light and you need to get more light into the into your retina, the um, the dilator pupillae, which is our radial muscle fibers going in this direction, indicated by these arrows, and it will make the pupil larger to let more light in. Um, in dim conditions or during flight or uh, fight or flight modes. Um, I always think of uh, Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf, you know, all the better to see you with my dear. Um, you want to, if you're in a stressful situation, you want to be able to see as well as possible. And so you want that uh, pupil to be open. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. The the eyeball also has two large cavities, an anterior cavity and a posterior. The anterior cavity is can be further divided into two chambers, an anterior and a posterior chamber. Um, and I'm not going to worry about that too much. But the posterior chamber, this is where the vitreous is. The vitreous humor is filled with, is fills this back part of the orb. It helps... Um, it's kind of like um, loose jello, and it helps keep the retina pushed up against uh, the the choroid, uh, and it helps give the orb its shape. This um, anterior uh, cavity is divided into two quote unquote chambers. There's the anterior chamber, which is in between the cornea and the iris. And then the posterior chamber, um, which uh, is behind the lens here. And here it is again with uh, less, less structures. So here's this posterior cavity, which is filled with vitreous humor. And that vitreous humor is created by the ciliary body. And then our anterior cavity is divided into an anterior chamber and then just behind the iris is the posterior chamber. Um, again, it's filled with fluid called aqueous humor, and it is also created by the ciliary body. So the summary and what I need you to know for this 
brief section is what structures are included in the fibrous tunic and which of them is the main refractive index of the eye? What structures are included in the vascular tunic of the eye? What muscles control the size of the pupil? And what is the autonomic innervation of these muscles? And the, eye, the eyeball is divided into two large cavities. What are their names and where are they found? Got all that memorized? You're ready for your quiz um, and you'll be ready for your exam. Thank you.